Hey, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on types of transport in the cell. So let's talk about our first key concept here, which is materials move across membranes because of concentration differences. So today we're going to talk about passive and active transport, talk about what those are, and examples of each one. So let's start with passive transport. That is the movement of materials across the cell membrane without energy from the cell. So there is no energy used in order for this to happen. It is a passive process. The examples here are diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. We're going to look at those here in just a minute. Now on the other hand, active transport is when cells use energy to transport materials that don't diffuse normally. So you need a little bit of energy in order to make that happen. Uh, active transport, endo and exocytosis are your examples that we are going to look at today. So let's first start with diffusion. So diffusion, by definition, is the movement of molecules from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So we would say movement down a concentration gradient, high to low concentration. So you can see in the picture there, in the green, uh, green circles, the solute, that's the stuff that is moving, is going from a highly concentrated to a lower concentrated area. Bottom right, you see it moving across a membrane until it reaches that equilibrium. This is very much the same way that uh, the smell of perfume or something like that spreads throughout a room. It's sprayed in a certain area, and that's a very highly concentrated area, but soon it diffuses throughout the entire room, and the entire room smells nice, hopefully. So next, let's talk about osmosis. So osmosis is diffusion of water across a, a, per, a selectively permeable membrane until it reaches equilibrium. So with diffusion, the particles that were going from high to low concentration were not water. They were anything but water. Osmosis is the exact same thing, except the water is moving. So what's going to happen here is you see the uh, high water concentration on the left-hand side of this cell, and there is low water concentration on the right-hand side. You will see the water, the gray circles, or smaller circles, move from high water concentration to low water concentration, okay? Or the water is moving towards where there's a whole bunch of solute there in order to make everything equal. So remember, osmosis, only water here. So the last type of passive transport that we're gonna talk about is facilitated diffusion. Now this is diffusion of molecules from high to low concentration, not water, uh, using a transport protein. So the protein is going to actually help facilitate the movement of the particle across the cell membrane. Now, uh, glucose is an example of a particle that needs help from a transport protein to move inside and outside the cell or across that membrane. There are a couple other examples that you're probably gonna have to look up for your post notes practice. So now let's move to active transport. Active transport is when you move from low concentration to high concentration. That is against the gradient. Normally things don't want to move from low to high concentration. So that's why this is using transport proteins and energy. So we need to actually give a little bit of energy as effort. That energy is in the form of ATP. That is the energy currency of the cell. A good example of active transport is the sodium potassium pump. Sodium and potassium get pumped in and out of the cell. It requires ATP or energy to make it happen because a lot of times it's going against the concentration gradient. Another type of active transport is endocytosis. Remember, endo means inside. So this is the process of taking material into the cell by surrounding it with the cell membrane and it actually uses energy as well. So examples here are what are called phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis just means cell eating. So this is solid things that the cell is taking in. Pinocytosis is uh, cell drinking. So it's taking in liquid here. So if you see in a three-stage picture here, you see um, some sort of substance there in blue, uh, and the cell membrane is starting to make a little enclosure around it, and then it makes it a complete enclosure, bringing that substance inside then the, sub, the cell membrane that is now inside the cell breaks down, releasing whatever that substance was into the cell. So that is endocytosis. Now the opposite of that is exocytosis. 
This requires energy because we are trying to expel something out of the cell, get it out of there. So you have a vesicle that actually forms with the stuff that you're trying to get out and it's going to fuse with the cell membrane and then the cell membrane is going to open up and let those things out. So exocytosis, stuff leaving the cell, endocytosis, stuff coming into the cell.